Jerry Olson, president of the Washington Redskins Alumni Association. Jerry, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, guys. How's everybody doing? Great. I had said to you before, have you guys also had to change your name to Commanders? And you said... No. <laughs> uh, and not that not that there's anything really about the name, but right. in reality, all my guys are Washington Redskins alumni. They mm -hmm. never played for the commanders. So I'm sure at some point there will be commanders. We will never we are we're an association with this is our charity arm. Uh, our motto is caring for kids. We were started in nineteen fifty eight as a Washington Redskin Alumni Association. So and we're not tied into the team at all anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, before Colbert, uh, Bruce Allen was nice enough to give me an office at Redskin Park so that we, we could use the secretaries, the computers, the phones, and, and that saved us a lot of money as far as an association. Now, of course, it, the, the key back on that is Bruce and I were friends, so anytime he needed something to be done for the alumni, he would call me. And say, you know, so he's getting an employee free. I'm getting an office free. Mm -hmm. um, but since COVID. COVID. Well, then when COVID came, they closed down Redskin Park, where my office was. And they never reopened it. What they did is they moved the Charitable Foundation, Public Relations, Marketing, all over to FedEx Field. And so they said, we'll give you an office at FedEx Field if you want one. FedEx Field is 99 miles from my house. I don't really need that. So I moved everything to my house. And then when COVID got, was over and vaccinations and everything, um, Coach Rivera wants Redskin Park to be all football operations. And I never got in the way because Bruce and I were such good friends. But I could see where public relations and marketing and everything really got in the way of the football operations you know so he wants to keep Redskin Park solely for the team the trainers the coaches and that's what it is today so very good okay so who's buying the team well I'm pretty sure it's going to be the group in uh, Pennsylvania uh, he already owns a hockey team he owns a basketball team um, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen uh, the good side of that is the guy that's with the main guy is a real good friend of Mark Mosley's. So I'm hoping that if all that transpires and goes through, then Mark and I can meet with them and see if we can do something to continue to move the alumni along along the way. Um, they tried real hard. They did hire an alumni director two years ago, and they tried real hard because they know with the name change, they know with the Redskins going out, that the public's mad at them. So what they're trying to do is use my guys, the alumni, to soften the blow. Sure. Uh, so, Very popular alumni. Yeah. So last year, at, uh, during the season, the first game of the year, they honored all the players from the 60s, 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And then they had a, uh, four or five games later, we had our alumni weekend, had 135 alumni in from all over the country. And then the first game in January, I believe, they honored all the hogs. So they brought the hogs back. And then finally, I got them in the last game of the year. They retired Sonny Jurgensen's number. Uh, when Bobby Mitchell passed away, we've only retired uh, Sammy Ball's number. They've never retired anybody else's number. So when Bobby Mitchell retired, they retired Bobby's number. And I've worked with them real hard. Of course, Bruce was gone at that time uh, with the president, uh, Jason Wright. And I wanted them to, to retire the numbers of Sam Huff, Sonny Jurgensen, Bobby, and uh, Charlie Taylor while they were alive. I says, why don't you? But all, all four of those people had more than 50 years working with the Washington Redskins. They all had careers with the Redskins. Uh, Charlie Taylor was a coach when he retired. He had 30 years with the Redskins. How can you not honor him and retire his number? Well, of course, they didn't do it. They dragged their feet, and Charlie retired and Sam, uh, died, and Sam died. And finally, I mean, Sonny's not in the best of health. He's 88 years old. And finally, we did retire his number uh, the last game of the season. It's funny, I went up to the suite where he was, and he was sitting in the chair, and 
I says, Sonny, I says, what are you doing sitting in a chair? He says, I deserve it. <laughs> uh, Jerry, you mentioned about the popularity of the ownership. Dan Snyder is not well loved around the Washington, D.C. area, to put it mildly. Uh, you you knew him? You met with him? Oh, what were your opinion of the man? He's a good friend. Absolutely. I don't. And let me tell you something. I tell my friends I play golf with, we hate Dan Snyder. I says, how can you hate somebody you don't even know? I mean, I know him. I've been with him. And and. Well, I don't hate because him. The, I like because him. the team hasn't won under him, and because of all of the reports that came out about the behavior in the front offices that he allegedly, apparently, knew about and maybe committed. That's the reason why he he doesn't have good publicity. Then the question is, how much of the media, printed media, do you believe? Believe me, I've seen him. I'm, I'm there where when, in the old days at Redskin Park, all the media was there, and I know I went to a press conference one day and. I was sitting in the back, and afterward I went up to Bruce's office, and he says, you know, I saw you in the back of the press conference. Why were you there? I said, I wanted to hear what you said, not what they say you said. So I don't know why, and the ownership's going to change. Dan's going to be gone. That's fine. But it's not going to change the operation of the team. He was not doing anything to hinder the team. In the last 10, 15 years, all Dan Snyder's done is sign checks. All he's done is what everybody told him to do. Go hire Joe Gibbs. He went and hired Joe Gibbs. Go hire the guy from the college, Florida. What, uh, Spurrier. Spurrier. And he did everything that they told him to do. When he first bought the team, he meddled. He, he paid $800 million and says, I'm going to have fun with this. And he did. He did that for about five or six years and meddled. In the last time he hasn't meddled, uh, is his character – you know, they said uh, – uh, the culture, you're, and if you're CEO or your owner, you are responsible. I mean, whoever owns this company is responsible for you. I understand that. But the two people that screwed up the culture, and they really were bad, and I knew them well, they got fired eight years ago. He recognized what they were doing with all with the girl problems and the cheerleaders, and he fired them. I mean, one of them was the, was the COO. And he really was a jerk, and he should have been fired. And then he gets so the NFL, then they fine him $10 million. You know, you did something wrong, you get signed $10 million. All this thing with the girls, I don't get it. There's like 35 girls that have sexual abuse charges against him. There's only six girls that work at Redskin Park. I don't know where all these other girls came from. But... I know him. I mean, he's always he's every time I see him, he pats me on the back, says, thanks for what you do for the alumni. And I say, thank you for what you do for the alumni, because we never had an alumni weekend until mm -hmm. Dan Snyder got and Bruce Allen got here. And they that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event with one hundred and thirty five people from all over the country. And he pays the whole bill. So, uh, well, does he have some character problems? Yeah. Number one, I think he drinks too much. And that's a problem. But, but he's gone. He's gone. But new owners coming in, I don't necessarily know that's going to change what happens on the field. Mm -hmm. it, it's as messed up as it is on the field. It's just as messed up inside. And uh, I'm not a Ron Rivera fan. Uh, he's a defensive coach. And the one thing they did when they hired Ron Rivera four years ago, they gave him the keys to the castle. So if you want to get mad at somebody about the football, he's got everything that happens in the, on that football field and in that Redskin Park is what he wants to happen. Uh, well, you know, obviously when Shanahan was there, there were a lot of great young offensive minds on that staff and they all got away. Shanahan, you know, what he did is he messed up RG3, mm -hmm. ruined his career. So in my opinion, the only reason Mike Shanahan, and I liked him a lot too, uh, was there is because he was grooming his son Kyle who was a pain in the you know what <laughs> while he was at the Redskins but turned out to be a pretty decent coach maybe you know I think he blew two Super Bowls McVay was on that staff McVay as well McVay was great yep McVay was great and a great guy hey let me get to this before we're okay. out of time here right we've got this golf tournament coming up May 22nd to benefit Habitat yeah. for Humanity. Yeah. Doug Whitmire, who is a, a icon in the community in the state and was a real good friend of mine, and somehow he talked me into going on the board of Habitat for Humanity. And so I did, and I went on with him uh, to, to keep him company. And then 
two months later he dies at age 90 and leaves me by myself. So, <laughs> the nerve of him, yeah. So uh, we need funds. We need fundraisers. So I, I started last year a charity golf tournament to honor the memory of Doug Widmeyer, and it was very successful last year. This is our second year. It's going to be held May 22nd. We need your help. We're part of the champions Tournament of Champions, so the winning team from our tournament will go on to play free in the Tournament of Champions. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at the Woods Resort. You need to come help us. We need the money. Habitat is a great, great organization. Last year, we put a family into a brand-new house in Shepherdstown. Uh, we're looking to do a rehab to a house in Martinsburg. And we're looking for property in Morgan County to build a house. And our main effort this year is, by the first year of the year, we want to open our ReStore again. And uh, we've had a lot of requests for the ReStore. It was very popular, apparently, when it was here. Had to close down because they lost their facility. So we need to raise money to get the ReStore back open. It's something we need. It's something the community needs. And it does take a lot of capital to open it. Once we get it open, it's self-supporting. But we really need help, and the, the golf tournament's a great way to kick in and help us. May 22. May 22. Billy. Yeah, uh, several questions, Jerry. Uh, one, the number of teams will be involved in the uh, Classic, ideally. Uh, I like 25 teams. 25 uh, teams. Yeah, obviously right. you can do uh, with the Redskin Tournament, which I started in 1980, which has been going 40 years. We do fivesomes, and we'll do 30 to 36 okay. teams. 36 teams max. Last year we had 18 teams. Uh, right now we're sitting at about 15. I'd like to get to 25, but 20 is about good. We netted 15,000 last okay. year from this tournament. I'm I, the name alumni that impl implies infers someone that's formerly involved with the Redskins, player, <laughs> coach, and the like. Were you? And I should know this. I are you? Were you formerly involved? No, okay. but I can tell you, uh, I got involved. Um, my best friend was Andy Stinchula. Nobody knows who Andy Stinchula was. And he was drafted in 1960 out of Penn State and played for the Redskins. And I used to kid him and tell him the most successful thing he did in his career, we traded him to New York for Sam Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and it really used to irritate him. But I was general manager of a country club, and uh, he wanted to start the alumni golf tournament in 1980. So because of my golf background, he wanted me to help him. And we started the first tournament this year, where I think will be our 42nd year. Uh, but he was killed in a car accident in 1985. Mm -hmm. So then everything just inherited to me. Okay. So I didn't, but um, I can tell you a funny story. I was in a constant course. I should say everything that I have, it says Redskins. Underneath should say free. Because I, <laughs> I just go down to the equipment manager and say, you know, I need a hat. I mean, But I have so much alumni stuff from all the golf tournaments. And I was in a concert one time. And I went in and out, and finally this guy stopped me. And he says, you know, I can't stand it. Did you used to play for the Washington Redskins? Yeah. I said, yeah. He says, what's your name? I said, Daryl Green. <laughs> he says, no kidding. I didn't know Daryl was white. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's me. And, you know, I could have said Mike Bragg or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So, no, I'm not a former player, but uh, they're my brothers, really. We've been together so long. The Mike Braggs, the Mark Mosleys, the Pat Fisher, Ron McDowell. Yeah. And we're just losing so many of them. I mean, I was telling – I'm going to be 85 next month, so a lot of our guys are passing away, the, yeah. the old guys. So you're involved with Habitat for Humanity with this event, right. but previously you've been involved with the Senior Center and yeah. other places. So you, I, you've been in the area, what, 20 years, 15 to 20 years? That period? Yeah, I moved here in, when I retired in uh, 20. Yeah. Okay. So, but you've been very active in a lot of different fronts, the nonprofits which is a, a real tribute to you, and we as a community have benefited a great deal from your involvement. Well, I think we're here to give back. Yeah. We're nothing. We're here to give back. But I will tell you a brief story if we've got time, Rob. Sam Huff came to me. Of course, Sam was a good friend. He said, Jerry, of course, you know, he started the West Virginia Breeders' Classic 30-some years ago, horse race. He said, I need you to get on the board of the Breeders' Classic. I said, Sam, I've really got a lot to do. I don't need to be on the board of the Breeders' Classic. 
He said, you need to learn more about horses. I said, no, I don't. And he said, well, I need somebody to run the golf tournament and the breakfast of champions. So that's how I got on the Board of Breeders Classic. So, um, And the thing with uh, Habitat, which it is funny because I'm probably the worst handyman in the whole state of West Virginia. Probably have no business being on a Habitat. But, <laughs> but uh, Doug wanted me to come on, and I just I, I loved Doug so much that it was a way to honor his memory. So, All right, let's make some headlines. In your experience... Living or dead, which Redskin is the best golfer? Mark, well, I can tell you, Mark Rippon, because he won that first charity tournament that they had out in, in Lake Tahoe, but actually the best golfer he ever had is Chip Low Miller. Oh, the kicker. Yeah. Almost all of them, all the quarterbacks, Sonny Jurgens was a great athlete. Sonny could have played baseball with Baltimore Orioles right out of college. Uh, and Sonny could go out and play golf, play every couple of months and shoot 75. So he's just, Sonny's just a pure athlete. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Rippon's very, very good. Rippon tried to get on the senior tour and couldn't make it. But he's a good one. Most of the quarterbacks all are good athletes. My friend Joe Theismann, who we all know, uh, if thank God he's mellowed out at age 65 because he really was a jerk when he was. You know. That's what people say. Yeah. But uh, he's mellowed, and Joe's really a good guy. Joe's a good golfer. Um, there's only one quarterback I know that didn't play golf, and that was Bob Holly, a guy we had years ago. Very unusual for quarterbacks not to play golf. Um, the guy we had here that broke his leg uh, recently recently oh the quarterback yes yeah that's not theisman you know? no, 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 no no recently, recently uh, um, we're all we got him from from uh, alex smith alex oh, alex, yeah, alex yeah, is yeah, a yeah, very yeah, good golfer yeah. and alex uh he played in the pebble beach pro-am and he was five under and his pro was five over wow mm, yeah what about the draft were well, you watching the uh I, I don't get – I'm not a real big fan of draft picks, mm -hmm. but I do have – while you talk about drafts, I'll give you a real good trivia question because I like to, to watch. They look at rookies that are drafted that get a second contract. You know, the rookie contract's four years. So they look at the positions to see who's getting the contract for the, to go on after their fourth year. And by the way, most of them don't get a fourth quarter. The one position that gets 100% gets a second contract, offensive center. Mm. So me, if I was in charge of our draft, I would have gone and drafted number one, the center at Alabama or Georgia because they play NFL style of football. Uh, the draft was good. I would have gone to offensive line. I would have gone to center first. Ron Rivera's in charge. We got a great general manager. Mark Mayhew is a great general manager, but I don't think he can manage because Rivera's got the keys. So he drafted a defensive cornerback, which is a good guy, runs a 4-3. Uh, and But then the second pick, he drafted another quarterback, cornerback. And then he went and got a center and an offensive lineman. So... I don't know. It, it's it's so hard for a college player to make it in the NFL. It's the, the speed and the, the – I mean, now they work out 12 months out of the year. There is no off offseason. Uh, there used to be. It's a year-round season, man. Year-round season. May 22 is the Doug Widmeyer Memorial Charity Golf Classic at the Woods Golf Course, Hedgesville. Mark Mosley is the honorary chairman. Uh, Mark playing golf that day, too? He has, for a kicker, he's had more operations than a, a defensive tackle. But would you read the, the telephone number and the website? I can uh, do that. 304-263-3154. And to sign up, uh, R Keys, K-E-E-S, at HabitatEP.org. It's $125 a person, $500 uh, for the team. Registration is at 9, lunch and tee-off time at 11. And again, that's May 22 at the Woods Golf Course to benefit Habitat for Humanity of the Eastern Panhandle. Yeah, our executive director is Robin. Our office manager is Karen. You call them and they'll help you out. And uh, we really could use your help. 
And you, Rob, thanks for the time. Well, Appreciate anytime, it. Anytime, man. <laughs> yeah. As always. Yeah. Right. Thanks so much for coming. Thank in, you, Jerry. guys. Good to Jerry. see you. Right. That's uh, Jerry Olson, president of the Washington Redskins Alumni Association, about the Doug Widmeyer Memorial Golf Classic May 22.